Welcome, public inventors. Hi. I'd like to ask you to help me imagine something magical. I want to talk about giant shape-changing robots. So uh, I would like you to imagine that this object is much, much larger than it is right now. Perhaps that each of these members was 10 or 12 feet long. And that it could change shape in response to our mental commands that we could tell it to make itself a little smaller, make itself a little larger, curl itself up. Um, if we could do that, and this was a very large object, we would have a giant robot that uh, could respond to our commands. Now, what could we do if we could make such a thing? Well, it would be able to move. In particular, it might be able to walk or inchworm or crawl its way along. Um, if we had a structure like this, which is called an octet truss, which looks a little bit like a bridge, it is technically a truss, we could imagine it very slowly walking into position, perhaps across a chasm, and forming a bridge, which could be deployed in a matter of hours rather than in a matter of days. If we took two such objects to make it symmetric, we could have a very strong bridge that could be very quickly deployed. Once it had crawled into position, we simply tell it to stop moving, and then it's a very strong object because it's built like a truss to begin with, or a so-called space frame. So I think there's a lot of value in creating what might be called polymorphic or metamorphic shape-changing space frame robots. And that's what um, I've been working on for some time. Now, uh, this shape is a standard truss shape called an octet truss. But you can imagine different shapes. Uh, for example, this is a little bit like a dog or an animal. It has four feet and it could walk the way we imagine quadrupedal uh, animals walking. I've added a little white head here. And you could imagine this kind of object crawling into a rubble field where perhaps people were trapped and with the aid of real dogs to identify the victims, carefully lifting up and removing rubble. Now, uh, if you um, take this shape, the octet truss, you'll notice that it's perfectly uh, flat and straight. That is particularly advantageous in some situations. One of my great mentors, Kent Beck, always says, you should do the simplest thing that can possibly work. And this is perhaps not the simplest shape. Well, believe it or not, a very simple shape is this, which Buckminster Fuller called the tetrahelix. It's also called the burdick coxeter helix. You'll see that it is, in fact, a triple helix. The red, yellow, and green bars uh, twist naturally. This is nothing more than tetrahedra stacked face to face, in some sense the simplest object that can be made. Unlike DNA, which is a double helix, this happens to be a triple helix. Now, if that object could change its shape by the members getting longer or shorter, we could imagine a snake or tentacle robot that looked something like this. This is a little fragile, but all that has happened here is I've made the green lines longer, and that has ex uh, exaggerated the twisting shape of this thing. And you can certainly imagine something like this, if the, each of these members were perhaps six feet long, crawling into a building, and by virtue of wedging itself against something, lifting up rubble over here or perhaps crawling into a burning building with a fire hose uh, that it's carrying. And because these members can be very powerful, uh, it could uh, carry a very forceful, heavy object in that way.